Science 5 Quarter 2 Week 6 Milk Base Let's learn about Modes of Reproduction in Plants Hello kids! It's me, Teacher Frel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the notification bell for the latest video. You can also follow my Facebook page, Teacher Frel TV. Welcome back kids! For today's lesson in Science 5, we will discuss about the modes of reproduction in plants. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to Describe the different modes of reproduction in flowering and non-flowering plants such as moss, fern, mongo, and others. Like other organisms, plants can also reproduce using different ways. In the previous lesson, you learn about how plants undergo sexual reproduction. At this point, you will recognize other means of plant reproduction, specifically through vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is an asexual reproduction in plants using different parts like stem, roots, and leaves to produce new plants. Asexual reproduction does not involve the use of seeds to propagate. This lesson will give you an understanding on the different modes of reproduction among flowering and non-flowering plants. Doing the different activities or tasks in this lesson will help you identify the different parts that can be used to produce new plants aside from seeds. Are you familiar with horseradish, fiddlehead fern, and mosses? If you know them, have you tried looking at their parts? Look at the chart below. Try to draw each plant and complete the table. The first name of plant is horseradish. In Tagalog, it is called malunggay. This is the drawing or picture of horseradish. Classification with flowers or without flower, this is a flowering plant. Next plant is the fiddlehead fern in Tagalog is pako. This is the drawing or the picture of this plant. The classification of this plant is a non-flowering plant. And the last plant is mosses. In Tagalog is lumot. This is how it look. The classification of mosses is a non-flowering plant. The previous lesson provides you the understanding about flowers as reproductive organ of fruit-bearing plants to produce seeds to grow new plants. In general, plants are classified into two major groups, flowering and non-flowering plants. Flowering plants are those that have an obvious flower as accessory organ. In botany, means branch of science that deals with the study of plants, they are called as angiosperms. Plants that belong to angiosperm family reproduce bisexually by means of their flowers. The presence of flowers may give clue that the plant produces seeds that mature within the fruits. There are two groups of angiosperm, dicotyledonous and monocotyledonous plants. Dicotyledonous plants are plants with knitted veins and with two cotyledons in its embryo. Some examples of dicotyledonous plants are beans, peas, and daisies, while monocotyledonous plants are bamboos, bananas, and lilies. And now, let us do learning task 1. Observe your surrounding. List down the plants that possess the given description below on monocot and dicot. 
Let us study first the description of monocot. Monocot seed is one cotyledon. The root is fibrous roots. Vascular, scattered. Leaf is parallel veins. And the flower is multiples of three petals. And then the description of dicot is the seed, two cotyledon. The root is top roots. The vascular is ringed. The leaf is net like veins. And the flower is four or five petals. Some examples of monocotyledonous plants are sweet potatoes, onions, orchids, sugar cane, and daffodils. And some examples of dicotyledonous plants are soybeans, carrots, peanuts, roses, and sunflowers. Flowers are important for plants to bear fruits and produce seeds. However, there are also plants that do not use flowers for reproduction. These plants are called non-flowering plants, like the given examples below. And now let's proceed to learning task 2. There are non-flowering plants that do not produce flowers and seeds. There are plants that produce spores. There are plants where seeds are not developed inside the parts of the flowers. In this activity, try to rearrange the jumbled letters to know these plants. Let us read the first description to rearrange the jumbled letters. They are plants that use cones to house their seeds. They are woody plants and most of them are trees. One word. Correct! This kind of plant is gymnosperms. Let's proceed to the second description. They are the simplest plants and are not well adapted to terrestrial life. It is one word. What kind of plant is this? Very good! This plant is bryopites. And let's proceed to the last description. They have specialized stem that moves water and nutrients from the roots. Some use spores to grow new plants. What kind of plant is this? Three words. Very good! Number one is seedless. Number two is vascular. And number three is plant. Seedless vascular plant. Gymnosperms. They are plants that use cones to house their seeds. They are woody plants and most of them are trees. Bryopites. They are the simplest plants and are not well adapted to terrestrial life. Seedless vascular plant. They have specialized stem that moves water and nutrients from the roots. Some use spores to grow new plants. And now, let us proceed to learning task 3. Based on the given description, identify the classification of the plants found on the left side of each description. Mosses. They are small plants that produce spores for reproduction instead of seed and don't grow flowers, wood, or true roots. What classification of plant is this? Very good! The classification is bryopites. Second picture, ferns. Ferns generally reproduce by producing spores. Similar to flowering plants, ferns have roots, stems, and leaves. What is the classification of this plant? Very good! The classification of this plant is seedless vascular plants. And third, conifers. They produce cone-bearing seeds. All living conifers are woody plants and most are trees. Pines are typical examples of conifers. What classification of plant is this? Very good! The classification of this plant is gymnosperms. In general, 
Non-flowering plants may be also classified into two main groups. The first group produces spores, while the second group makes seeds to reproduce in the absence of flower as accessory organ. Let's study the characteristics of the following. In the first column, we have characteristics. In the second column, we have flowering plants. And in the third column, we have non-flowering plants. We will identify if those characteristics is flowering plants or non-flowering plants. The first one is the flowers. Flowers are flowering plants. Next, seeds are flowering plants. Third, spores are non-flowering plants. Fourth, vascular system, transport of water and nutrients are non-flowering plants. Next, pollination. Flowering plants. Next, seed dispersion through wind and water. This is flowering plants. And the last one is the fruit. This is flowering plants. Remember, plants are classified into two major groups, flowering and non-flowering plants. Flowering plants are those that have an obvious flower as accessory organ. In botany, branch of science that deals with the study of plants, they are called as angiosperms. Flowers are important for plants to bear fruits and produce seeds. However, there are also plants that do not use flowers for reproduction. These plants are called non-flowering plants. So kids, do you understand our lesson today? Wow! Good job! Kids, I hope you learned a lot from this lesson. Until our next topic, bye-bye kids! Thanks for watching!